or perhaps false prophetess. This false prophetess is known as Jean Dixon. She lived from 1918 to 1997. She was considered one of the greatest of those who predicts, who uses astrology and many other things. Her correct prophecies, where she was matching, was the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. Winston Churchill being unseated as Prime Minister after World War II, which happened, and the partition of India, which also happened. So indeed, she was correct in that. But what about her false prophecies? We'll take a look at a false prophecy. On July 10, 1967, a murder took place in which a woman by the name of Mary Flazar was reported missing from her apartment near East Michigan University. On the 7th of August that same year, her badly decomposed body was found near the foundation of a farmhouse two miles north of a town in Michigan. She had been stabbed to death and her feet and one hand were missing, along with the fingers of her other hand. She was nude and her clothing was found under a pile of trash. The only clues to her murder were the sighting of a bluish gray Chevy that had pulled up to her as she walked home the night she disappeared, and a young man whom nobody seemed to know who showed up at the funeral home to take photos of the corpse. There were no leads. During that fall semester, a rumor went around the campus of East Michigan University that psychic Jean Dixon had predicted a string of murders with a death toll of some 50 young women on four Michigan college campuses. Ms. Dixon denied making such any such prediction and assured the students, ironically, that they would feel safe. So, after this murder, Jean Dixon told them that they should feel safe and that she had made no prediction and that there would be no other further murders. But listen to this interesting historical tidbit. Then a 23-year-old law student, Jane Mixer, was found on May, March 25th 1969, fully clothed in a cemetery in Denton Township. She had been shot twice in the head, strangled, and then covered with a yellow raincoat. So that shows us that her false prophecy about the students being safe at that university in 1967 was a false one, and that indeed there were other murders. Another false prophecy that she gave is that she predicted that the Soviets would beat the United States to the moon and that World War II would begin World War III would begin in 1958. Well, as we're sitting here in the year of 2004, we can see that that did not happen. She also foresaw a holocaust for the 1980s and that Rome would rise and become the world's foremost center of culture, learning, and religion and that the Middle Eastern child whose birth she witnessed in the vision of Queen Nefertiti on February 5, 1962, will unite all warring creeds and sects into one all-embracing faith. That has not happened either. Jean Dixon also predicted that there would be a cure for cancer in 1967. In addition to this, she said that there would be peace on earth by the year 2001. Obviously, since the events of September 11, 2001, that has been exposed as a hopeless sham. She also said and claimed to see in a vision that a comet would strike the earth in the middle of the 1980s and that earthquakes and tidal waves would befall us as a result of tremendous impact of this heavenly body in one of our great oceans. Notice that that didn't happen. Another false prophecy. Another one. So, astrologers by nature make false prophecies, and the prophecies that are true are overwhelmed by the 97 to 95 percent or whatever number that we want to look at, the great majority of their prophecies are false. They are false. Now, what should we 
do? And what is our action regarding those who approach astrologers and seek rulings from them? What is the actual ruling regarding those who go to astrologers or seek rulings for them or those that go into astrology? What has the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us? He has given us ample warning. Please listen to this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states, Whoever approaches a fortune teller or astrologer and believes in what he says has rejected faith in what was sent down on Muhammad. This is collected by Imams Ahmed and Abu Dawood in his Sunan, Volume 3, a had- Hadith, number 3895. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says further, Whoever comes to a diviner or fortune teller and believes in what he says, then he has already rejected faith in what was sent down on Muhammad. This is collected by Imams Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Al-Hakim, as Sayyuti and Sahih al Jami'ah, Hadith number 5939, and it is classified as Sahih as the one before it. We also receive another warning where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbids us by saying, quote, Whoever comes to a diviner and asks him regarding something, his salah is not accepted for 40 days. This is collected by Imams Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Muslim, and As Sayyuti. Hadith number 5940 and classed as Sahih. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu warned us again, whoever learns a branch of the study of stellar sciences has learned a branch of magic. And the more he increases in it, the more he increases in sin. Collected by Imams Ahmed ibn Hanbal ibn Majah Abu Dawood, in, his English, in the English translation of the Sunan of Abu Dawood, Volume 3, Hadith, number 3896, Jalal al-Din al-Sayyuti, in his Sahih al-Jami'ah, Hadith 6074, and all of them are classed as Sahih by these Imams, Rahimahumullah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, and he feared for us when he prophesied, what I fear for my ummah the most after me is injustice of rulers, Belief in the stars and rejection of Al-Qadr. Collected by Imams Ibn Asakir and as sayuti in his Sahih Al-Jami'ah, Hadith number 214. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said further, I fear for my ummah two situations, rejection of Al-Qadr and affirmation and belief in the stars. This is taken and collected by Imams Ibn Adi, Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, Abu Ya'al al-Mawsuli, and as sayuti in his Sahih al-Jami'ah, Hadith number 215, and they are classed as Sahih. So this is the danger of those that would actually go to astrologists, astrologers, or learning of these things. It is dangerous. We must avoid it. We must fear Allah. The means, and this is a final point that I want to give. The means for all things, including weather, our life influences, who we will marry, and likewise, is the sole domain of the knowledge of the Lord of all creation. The stars and the like are only the means that Allah has employed to show us His signs. Take this hadith as an example. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with a sahaba one night when a meteor shot past in the sky, giving off a bright light. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to those in attendance, What did you used to say in the days of jahiliyyah, ignorance, about such a shooting star? They said, Allah and his Messenger know best. But we used to say that a great man had been born and a great man had died. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Shooting stars do not take place at the birth or death of anyone. Allah merely issues the command when he decides to do a thing. The angels bearing the throne extol his glory. Then those in the sky extol his glory who are next in proximity, and they do so until it reaches those of the sky of this world. Then those who are near the bearers of the throne ask those who are bearing the throne, What has your Lord proclaimed? 